Hi, my name is Kareen Wallach and I am the community manager at Neo4j. I'm here to tell you a little bit about why people all around the world are excited about Global Graph Celebration Day. What is Global Graph Celebration Day? A little over 300 years ago, on April 15th, a man named Leonard Euler was born. Euler later became a legendary mathematician whose legacy endures today. In 1735, he decided to take on a problem that was regularly discussed by the residents in Konigsberg, Germany. The city had seven bridges, which connected two large islands with the mainland. People had always wondered if it was possible to cross each bridge once and only once to get back to the original starting point. To tackle this problem, Euler drew a picture consisting of dots, vertexes, representing the land masses, and lines, edges, representing the bridges that connected those land masses. This allowed him to simply trace the graph without actually lifting his pencil. After Euler discovered that it was not possible, he coined the term for a graph where you can walk each edge exactly once and return to the same vertex. This condition was called the Eulerian circuit. This, my friends, was the birth of graph theory. Neo4j is an ACID-compliant, schema-free, transactional graph database that allows you to store your data in the shape of a graph. It has index-free adjacency that allows you to hop through many connections very quickly. Neo4j can be a powerful tool to see how things are connected to one another, find patterns in your data, pathfinding, and just generally making sense of complexly connected data. This enables people who see the world in graphs to tackle their connected data problems. Graphs are everywhere. Here's how graphs and this technology are innovating our world today. Hi everyone, I'm Pierre Romera. I'm the CTO of the ICIJ. Uh, the ICIJ is a small organization that runs huge investigations around uh, data and global issues. What we did before was the Panama Papers or the Paradise Papers that were amazing projects that involve a lot of journalists around the world. Uh, those two projects uh, represent around 4 terabytes of data close to 30 millions of documents. So we had to create tools and databases to be able to read everything that was in those documents. Um, to do so, we built a lot of tools and scripts, programs that were able to extract data to build databases. So from unstructured data, we got structured data. At the end, we had this huge database built at the top of Neo4j where every entities, offshore entities, offshore companies were connected to people in many places in secret jurisdiction. Because of that, we were able to establish hidden pattern in the data and we were able to find um, connection be between those people and connect the dot to be able to build new stories. At the end, because of that, we were able to publish stories involving very high profile and um, demonstrating the potential tax evasion and illegal behavior that was in those jurisdictions. So thanks to the graph database, we were able to find hidden stories in the data. I'm Hilary Mason, the General Manager for Machine Learning at Cloudera. So I was the founder of Fast Forward Labs about four and a half years ago, where we do applied machine learning research and advising to help customers really accelerate and embrace machine learning and AI opportunities. Uh, we were acquired by Cloudera about a year ago and are now Cloudera Fast Forward Labs. This morning, I spoke about the power of metaphor and how we think about the problems we need to solve and how that metaphor can then drive the architectural decisions we make. And so we work pretty broadly in machine learning across a variety of industries, use cases, and techniques. Um, and within that, we find that there are a few really powerful metaphors that tend to resonate. And of course, graphs are one of those dominant metaphors uh, where it just makes a lot of intuitive sense to us that uh, the world is represented in nodes and edges and uh, characteristics of the relationships between those nodes. My name is David Messa. I'm the Chief Knowledge Architect at NASA Johnson Space Center. So how we use Neo4j at NASA? There's a lot of different little projects that we're working on. Primarily when I started Neo4j about four years ago, I was looking at a concept where we could explore our lessons learned database 
a lot faster and, and help our engineers and scientists find information in those databases uh, rather than going through your standard key list search and uh, being able to look at the relationships between the different lessons across the decades. Because as NASA, we've got 50 years of data. And even recently, it allowed somebody in our Orion project to be able to go back and look at our Apollo information and prevent it a, an issue they were having. And it actually saved them well over two years on that project and about a million dollars of taxpayer funds. My name is Alicia Powers. I am the Senior Vice President at New York City Economic Development Corporation. I work in the research department. Um, I'm a data scientist. Well, I came to Neo4j to work on a hobby project. Um, I was really interested in understanding food and try to build a recommendation engine. So what made uh, Neo4j stand out to me was the ability to really see connections between different aspects of eating. So not only do you have a person, you have when they're eating, how they're eating, how much they're eating. There are all these different points of data that you can use to make a recommendation engine. And if you're using a, like a SQL or even a document database, it's really hard to start to see the patterns uh, visually. And I'm a visual learner, I love pictures, and Neo4j presents the data in the way that people actually see the data, experience the data, live the data. My name is David Fox, and I'm a software engineer at Adobe, and I work specifically on our Behance uh, social network product. Uh, so the use case was our activity feed, so it's a really user-facing feature uh, on, on Behance. It's our homepage right, uh, right now. You'll see like a feed uh, of activity from people you, you follow and curated categories you follow, so kind of content from our curators. I'm Daniel Himmelstein. I'm a data scientist at University of Pennsylvania. My use of Neo4j focuses on encoding biological and medical knowledge into a network. And I decided that Neo4j and networks were the best way to encode uh, this type of knowledge, the knowledge produced by millions of studies over the past 50 years, into a network or into a computer. So we use Neo4j uh, to represent the rich types that nodes or relationships can have in real-world biological data. My name is Alexander Turash. I'm from the German Center for Diabetes Research in Germany, which is a federal nonprofit organization. And we are studying diabetes um, in university hospitals and basic research. We uh, have Neo4j as a knowledge graph or a uh, a graph over our relation, uh, relational databases and we use Neo4j to connect the different types of data, the different disciplines um, across the locations, across species and um, yeah, across different research areas. My name is Ann Grubbs. Um, I am the Chief Data Engineer for Space IT at Lockheed Martin. We are using Neo4j as a master data management tool. So we're trying to get uh, uh, our product DNA uh, laid out so that we can use that as a reference for other applications and for analytics and to understand how our business works. My name is Andy Robbins. I'm a red teamer penetration tester at Spectre Ops, formerly from the Adaptive Threat Division at Veris Group. I've been pen testing and red teaming for the past five years. Basically, we get paid to break into organizations, steal their data, and give them a report on how we did it. So the most interesting Neo4j project that we work on is a project called Bloodhound. Bloodhound is the result of months of effort by myself, Rohan Vazerker, and Will Schroeder, and also based on years of work by Will Schroeder with situational awareness in Active Directory environments. Basically, what Bloodhound lets a pen tester or a red teamer do is map out the privileges in an enterprise and also map out attack paths that go from a low privilege user all the way to a high privilege user or to a computer that has a certain data asset or data objective on it. Thanks for joining us for Global Graph Celebration Day. Happy connecting!